welcome back today we will discuss characteristic functions so the if x is a random variable then the characteristic function uh, is defined as follows cx of t is defined as expectation of e power i t x okay where t is some real number okay so this t is some real parameter x is your random variable this e power i is of course your uh, i squared is minus 1 right it's your square root of your uh, minus 1 uh, e power i t x is a complex valued random variable right so which is something again we have not really uh, talked about so you can so you can actually take this as expectation of cos tx plus i times expectation of sin tx cos tx and sin tx are random variables parameter is by t and you take their expectations so expectation of cos tx plus i times expectation of sin tx now this you know what it means right because these are all real valued random variables so that is the uh, definition of a characteristic function okay so it, 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 this is again defined for any random variable right so for any random variable with probability law px so px is your law then cx of t is nothing but integral e power i t little x uh, d p x right so given your probability law you can compute the characteristic function again here e power i t x is just cos t x plus i sin t x so you can evaluate the real and imaginary part uh, as usual okay so now this so why do you need this characteristic function see this characteristic function is analogous to a fourier transform just like your uh, moment generating function is an analogous to a laplace transform in particular when you have a density if x is a continuous random variable with probability density function fx then cx of t is equal to integral e power i t x uh, fx of x tx x is from minus infinity to infinity because in the case of a continuous random variable you know that Radon equilibrium theorem tells you that dpx is fx dx right yeah so this is like a fourier transform of the pdf except that fourier transform usually has a negative sign here it's the only difference okay so now why do you need this so why not just the uh, the moment generating function so the reason is so the main reason is that the moment generating function does not always exist uh, outside s is equal to 0 right as this is equal to 0 moment generating function is equal to uh, 1 but the, as we saw in the case of a Cauchy random variable for example the moment generating function was undefined for all other arguments but on the other hand the characteristic function is always well defined and it is finite okay for any random variable so the reason that is true is the following so if you look at um, so okay so if you is true more generally but if you just look at this for a continuous random variable if you take absolute value the absolute value of this integral then you can bound it above by the integral of the absolute value right but the absolute value of e power i t x is 1 so you will have so the absolute value of c x of t is upper bounded by 1 always right so uh, so this integral in particular you can show is uh, uniformly convergent for all t right for all real t 
this is uniformly convergent okay absolutely convergent therefore uniformly convergent so this is always well defined that's one thing so you can handle even random variables such as uh, Cauchy, so you can basically handle these heavy tail random variables which decays lower than all these exponentials like Cauchy and so on for which the moment generating function is not defined outside s is equal to 0 but characteristic function will be defined okay. The other reason is that at some level this uh, the inversion of characteristic function is a little bit easier than inversion of uh, moment generating function for the simple reason that. Uh, just like the inversion of Fourier transform is a little bit easier right you can write down an explicit formula which does not involve some very uh, very complicated contour integrals over the complex plane and so on right. So, it is a little bit easier. So, in the case of moment generating function you have to do some pattern matching here you can actually write down some more elementary formula for the inversion that is a more practical reason. So, there is one thing I want to uh, point out. So, le let me just give an example right. So, I think my point will be clear if I give you an example of let us say uh, x is exponential with parameter mu right. So, f x is mu e power minus mu x for x greater than or equal to 0. So, uh, you are used to computing Fourier transforms in your signals and systems. Uh, so, you would expect the characteristic function to be the same thing except that uh, in your Fourier transform you have to be careful about the minus. So, wherever you have a minus in the Fourier transform you have to uh, get rid of the minus essentially right. So, if you have so, if you in whatever answers you know for your Fourier transforms replace your argument with minus t right then you should get your characteristic function. So, just as yes that is true right, but I want to make some uh, cautionary remarks. Uh, uh, so, I, I have to give you some caveats here. So, so in particular so if you try to if you write this. So, here is my pdf and my characteristic function will be integral 0 to infinity mu e power minus mu x e power i t x d x right. Fine. So, now, so this is I mean again this is an integral you would have computed uh, in signals and systems. So, what you would normally do in signals and systems is that you three you would just write this as e power minus mu minus i t times x right. So, you will write this as e power 0 to infinity mu e power minus mu minus i t times x dx correct and then uh, you will just and then the answer is therefore mu over mu minus i t right this is for t in r value for all all real t. So, essentially in going from here to here what you are basically treating is this mu i mu minus i t you are treating is the as some a some real a right uh, and then you are just writing this integral down pretending that mu minus i t is some real number whereas it is not a real number right it is in fact a complex number right. So, so in this particular case I mean and you would have uh, similarly for the case of your in your signals and systems you will get a plus here that is all right the Fourier transform of this exponential uh, curve is a uh, you will have a plus here that is the only difference right. Now, this this step is not really correct it so happens that you, you, by sheer luck you get this answer if you just pretend that this is a real number ok. So, what you really have is a function of a complex variable right and this integral is should be treated as the integral over the contour of the real line ok. So, in order to evaluate this integral uh, strictly speaking you have to perform contour integration right. So, in fact the Fourier transform that you have been evaluating in signals and systems is in fact strictly speaking a contour integral ok. 
you see what I mean. So, this is something you do in single sensor systems right when you compute Fourier transforms this is not really justified. It so happens that in this case you get the correct answer even if you perform the contour integration correctly you get this answer ok. It so happens that if you treat this as a real number you, you happen to get the right answer by luck ok. There are examples where you will not get the correct answer ok if you just pretend that mu minus it is a is a real number. Um, Huh. So, uh, let me yeah now that I am talking about that uh, let me just give you a I told you the example of a Cauchy right. So, the one of the nice things about the characteristic function is it can help you handle things like the Cauchy distribution which the moment generating function does not allow you to handle right. So, if you have a Cauchy so if you have the Cauchy f x of x is 1 over pi 1 over 1 plus x square right. So, in this case your c x of t is equal to integral minus infinity infinity uh, uh, e power i t x over pi times 1 plus x square d x. Okay. So, now in this case actually you cannot explicit you cannot pretend this i t is some real number and do this integral ok and you will not get the answer ok. In fact, you might have done the see you have what you have after all is a function that looks like 1 over 1 plus x squared right and you have computed its you know its Fourier transform right I mean do you know its Fourier transform what it looks like the functional form e power Ha, huh, so you so yeah. So let's go back to so you think the, so the you know from your signal systems that the transform should look like e power minus some constant times absolute value of t, right? So just let's just go back to Fourier transforms from your signals and systems for a little bit. So if you have so you have so what do you use x so f of x so f of x and f of t for Fourier transform this is your function this is your transform right. You, so, you have you you know you write down relations like this right. So, if you have e power minus a x x greater than or equal to 0 the transform the Fourier transform is like 1 over a plus i t right. And so, and you have e power minus uh, a absolute x right you have to help me with this. So, this transforms to what uh, so something uh, 2 a right 2 a over a square plus ah uh, here yeah. see you know these by heart you know these by heart right. So, good. So, now what do you do? So, so this transform you the you you compute this explicitly again in computing this you will pretend that i t is a real number and you know add this up and then you get this answer right. Then you will invoke Fourier duality right to say that oh if you have uh, something like 1 over 1 plus x squared here right you should have something like e power minus absolute t I am missing some constants ok. Uh, I am surely missing some constants here but I, I do not really care about it. Uh, I am just saying that if you are given a function that looks like uh, the transform you use duality and say then the transform should look like this right that is what you do right. So, why do you not integrate this function pretending that e power i t x is a. So, you see what I am saying right you never calculate the Fourier transform of this by integration you always invoke Fourier duality right. So, I so, so the reason is so in signals and systems uh, you explicitly calculate the transform by integrating in precisely those cases where you can get away by pretending that i t is a real number. Okay. In cases like this where you cannot get away by pretending that i t is a real number you are told that do not do not integrate just use Fourier duality or some other property to get the answer. Now, the fact of the matter is in all these cases just blindly integrating this as a pretending this i t to be a real number is actually wrong. Some cases it gives you the right answer some cases it does not ok. So, this is something I want to point out ok. Actually doing this is possible ok, but you need contour integration 
okay so uh, that is not something i will expect of you i would just want to mention that these integrals are not i mean you are no, no longer an undergraduate studying signals and systems so i think you should at least know that there is more to it than what you studied in signals and systems so if you have something like this so you have a function that has uh, 1 over 1 plus x squared right so you have to essentially use contour integration and then invoke uh, the residue theorem okay you might have studied the residue theorem in complex analysis so what you do in evaluating something like this is that so this guy has two poles right this 1 over 1 plus x square has two poles you have a pole at i you have a pole at minus i right so you are basically integrating like that right over this line so you approximate so you you what you do is you perform contour integration over a big contour like that and then you compute that integral using the residue 2 pi i times the residue at i and then you similarly do it for this pole and then you have to argue that that integral and that integral will be zero right and finally you will get some answer right and in fact you will get the answer you expect i think you you will get e power minus absolute t okay you have to do it separately for t greater than 0 and t less than 0 and you will get this answer okay uh, yeah so you have to even here you have to do contour integration right but it so happens that you get this answer which you can with this you can believe this is harder to believe for you right that's because you can no longer treat e power it as a real number so is my point clear So, so even in Fourier transforms, this is how you should do it. Okay, strictly speaking, even when you are finding the Fourier transform of this exponential function, uh, you have to actually do contour integration. Okay, uh, so normally what you do in signal systems is you pretend that this is real, but you only do that in cases where you can get away, and in cases where you can't get away, you use some other trick. Right? Uh, yeah, I'm just pointing that out. Okay. actually yeah, so this is a very useful transform to know okay for a cauchy e power minus absolute t is the characteristic function any questions so far See, in cases where the moment generating function exists in an interval, you can actually obtain the characteristic function by simply putting s is equal to it. Okay. So, when the moment generating function exists in some interval around the origin, you know that the moment generating function is an analytic function and therefore, it is in fact analytic on the imaginary axis as well. So, in those cases, you can suppose in, the, in this case, right. Uh, so you, you can just put it s is equal to it even in the case of let us say in the case of the Gaussian right you can blindly put s is equal to it to get the characteristic function. Mm -hmm.